Hey guys, happy Friday! My Powerpuff shirt army is growing. Geeks of the Week! Steph, holy shit, Nurse Witch Kamugi. I've been meaning to watch that ever since I joined in on your anime Vegas Masquerade skit, like, what, three years ago or something? And I've never, never remembered to actually try looking it up somewhere until you mentioned it on Monday. So now I've looked it up, I found it, I watched it, and it's hilarious and weird and bizarre, but adorable, and it's kind of like a parody of anime, which is fantastic. And I guess for anyone who wants to see the skit I'm talking about, it's been on my regular channel forever, but I'll put a link below. <laughs> and as for a fictional character that I can relate to, I think I've said this before, I love sarcastic, clever, like, positive characters. But beyond that, I've always seen myself as like the fiercely loyal best friend rather than the main character of a show, if that makes any sense. So basically what I'm saying is I am Xander Harris. Party in my eye socket and everyone's invited. Liliko, you'll be happy to know I caught up on the last few episodes of Kill a Kill that I was behind on over the week, although I don't have a Crunchyroll account so I can't see the latest one, but it was getting seriously dark there for a little bit, holy shit. It's definitely a show that I've been enjoying more as it goes on and the story progresses and you get more into the background of what the hell's going on. Also, since we've established that I'm the supportive best friend, I'ma be Mako, cool? Cool. And Mario, you should definitely catch up on Arrow. He's good. He's good. The Superman GoPro thing was freaking awesome. I watched it when you posted it on our Facebook page and enjoyed every freaking second of it. It was fantastic. And the guy singing Let It Go and all the different Disney voices was the most glorious four minutes of my life. So, hey, thank you for sharing all of the awesome things. And yes, I've tried many a Kamehameha waves, sadly to no avail. And since I'm in the realm of like Disney Pixar stuff, I'm gonna share my excitement that Incredibles 2 was announced. I have been waiting for Incredibles 2 since the second I finished watching the first Incredibles. But you know, no, they had to make Cars 2. Incredibles is probably one of my favorite Pixar movies, so I am super stoked for a second one to be coming, finally. And since I'm wearing my Harry Potter shirt, they're putting a new thing in Harry Potter world, in the Wizarding world, uh, Hogwarts Express. They are putting the Hogwarts Express into the Wizarding World after I've already been there and I probably can't go back because it's friggin expensive because it's across the country. Why well, they put in new things when I can't go? It's coming this summer and you get to like ride on a train in the car booth things. I can't even think straight because I'm so excited and yet so depressed. If anyone goes Squeeze me in your suitcase. I'll fit in compact places, I swear. All right, all right, and the thing that I actually want to talk about this week very badly is a trailer that was released for The Giver. I'll put a link below to the trailer, but for anyone who doesn't know, it's based on a book by Lois Lowry. The Giver has been one of my all-time favorite books since I was eight, and it's the reason that dystopian novels are like my favorite genre of books. But as much as I love the book and its concept, I've never thought it would work in movie form and sadly the trailer doesn't change that opinion. I don't want to ruin it for anyone who hasn't read it, but basically there is a major difference between the world in this book and our world that we know beyond what is obvious, like the separation and rights being taken away for the sake of organization and peace and whatnot. That's general in most dystopian books, but there is a major, major difference, and it's a revelation that we as readers only realize when the main character realizes it, and it's something that can't work in a movie, it can't work in a visual medium because it can't be kept secret. Like, for me, the moment of this realization in the book was like, oh, holy shit, what? But because it's a visual difference between this world and our world, it, like I said, it's just not something you can do in a movie. But it's such a major thing that it, like, I feel like it has to be there. However, based on the trailer, it looks like they're not even doing that at all. Not only that, but I've read the book, and watching the trailer, I can't tell what the movie's about. But in the realm of dystopian movies I think did work, I saw a press screening of Divergent on Tuesday and enjoyed it. 
I it made me want to read the books. Those are the books. I, those are books I haven't read, unfortunately, because I didn't know it was dystopian. I thought it was just another like teen angsty romance novel series. But actually, this whole thing made me wonder. I know we've asked like if there's something that you've read that you would like to see an adaptation of, whether in movie or TV or whatever form. But I'm curious if there's anything that you love that you don't think would work in any other medium. Like, it works as it is, but it would be weird if it was something else. But anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome week and stay geeky, and we will see you next week. And as for what's fear, as for fear, fervor.